Tonight, from Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, it's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to Western Pennsylvania and Heinz Field in the Steel City of Pittsburgh. They love the black and gold here in the Steel City. And a few moments ago, their Steelers emerged from the Heinz Field Tunnel. They're set. We're set as the Steelers are ready to do battle with the Cleveland Browns. started and we are underway from Heinz Field. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone and they'll get him down right at the 25 yard line so the same result had he opted for the touchback. Here are the Steelers making their way out and with their longtime starter Ben Roethlisberger leading the way. We talk so often about his physical attributes of course the Big Ben nickname his ability to take hits in the pocket his ability to extend plays and get outside of the pocket but how about this for efficiency top 10 in career NFL passer rating and he's one of the top five winning his quarterbacks in NFL history that's pretty darn good. First carry for the 2018 Pro Bowler, James Conner. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Here's Roethlisberger. This is Chase Claypool on the receiving end. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. It's a gain of seven, and they'll be faced with a third in inches. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. Defense had a chance to get off the field here on the opening drive, couldn't do it. I know that we go into these meetings with coaches, and sometimes maybe we can get you know, a little bit numb because they're always going to talk about how important third down is, aren't they? offense and defense in this case one capitalized and the other as you said had a chance to get off the field and didn't get it done line of scrimmage the 37 on first and 10. now roethlisberger to throw that ball caught by the former toledo rocket deontay johnson uh, he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. On second down, Samuels. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. 
four yards the pick up, first down. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 49 yard line. Roethlisberger will hand to Connor. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Credit him with a one yard gain there to make it second and nine. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. 56, Mike, 56, right there, right there. Now it's Roethlisberger. Johnson with a completion over the middle. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. On third down, it's Connor. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. The Steelers call here on the Aussie, Australian-born Jordan Berry now to punt this one away. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. The Oklahoma product Baker Mayfield trotting out there now with the rest of this Browns offense. It's okay if I give him a few props right here. Do you mind? I think he's earned it. Go ahead. Okay, how about a guy who was a two-time walk-on, who later became a two-time Big 12 Player of the Year, has the most touchdown passes in Big 12 history with 129, a Heisman Trophy into his credit, and took his team to the college football playoff semifinal twice while at Oklahoma. Mayfield gonna lead the Browns up now, first and 10, just shy of the 30. And he'll drop here to throw. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Landry. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. The end result, 21 yards. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. That's into the hands of Donovan Peoples-Jones. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. From the gun, Mayfield. He'll get this one underneath to Hunt. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Probably me to jump in on you, partner, but they didn't waste any time getting downfield, did they? I mean, a nice big play there. Three plays, three successful plays in plus territory. Now this defense on its heels a bit. It seems like they had something targeted there, doesn't it? It's like, okay, we've got a matchup we like coming right out of the gate. Let's go ahead and get right to it. First carry now for Kareem Hunt. And this will leave him a yard short. 
Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your old line to set the tone of dominance and physicality, and pound the rock. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. His pass caught at the four. Yeah, the Browns are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. The Browns passing game finding its stride. They've got another first down. A first carry now for Nick Chubb. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. It looks like they quit hitting the snooze button on their alarm there. Finally a sign of life from this defense. They've been fairly passive on this opening drive. Now able to stand up on first and goal. And they sent that play backwards. Back at the two now, here's second and goal. They'll try again with Chubb. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. The Steeler defense proving its mettle here. And now this is third and goal. They'll try to run with Hunt. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Kareem Hunt taking it in. And the Browns have taken the early lead. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Cody Parkey is on now for the point after. It's up and through to make it 7-0 Browns. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And Kareem Hunt, the one to finish it off, as he did so with a touchdown run. Now after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. This will be fielded inside the five. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 26. He'll start the drive with a give to Connor. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Second and six, just inside the 30. 
Now Roethlisberger. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the former first-round pick, Kevin Johnson. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Browns' defense has a touchdown. And this defense looking like they have come to play the pick six. And just like that, it's 13-0 early on. Well, go back with me to our training camp visits. What do we hear during these drills? Oh, pass. pass. Ball. Ball's in the air. And then my favorite. Oski. That's the interception. <laughs> that means everybody finds someone to block. Block them legally. Stay on your feet. And they get it done. Touchdown. Now Parkey for the extra point. And it's good to make it 14-0. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This will be fielded inside the five. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Getting set to go again, Ben Roethlisberger heading back out there. And now, Charles, this becomes a pretty important second drive for them. They're already down a pair of scores here in the first quarter. As you noted, they're down two scores, and to me, they're down a possession or a service break if this were tennis, right? Because they just gave one up. Only their second drive now, run their offense, try and get back into the game that way, and then look for some help from their defense. And try to forget about that pick six last time out. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 26. Running to start the drive is Samuels. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Now Roethlisberger able to hit his target, Claypool. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Came up a little short on the last pass play. They did get nine yards out of it, leaving him with his third and one. Here's Connor, and he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. <laughs> 47 yards on the punt that time, just one yard on the return. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. They've got things going their way early. 14-0 lead and the football. First and 10. Six. 
They begin this drive with Chubb. And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. Ten yards there to start the drive, and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. A first down throw from Mayfield. Pressure comes and the Steelers take him down. The sack by T.J. Watt, or as his mother Connie calls him, Trent Jordan Watt. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability and a sack result. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Another try after the first down sack. Mayfield. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Mayfield to throw it. Got a man. That's Rashard Higgins. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. How about that? They weather the storm of a third and 17 to pick up the first. A pretty sizable deficit here in the first quarter. This defense uh, probably need to get off the field in those situations on third down. And you and I both know in this huddle before that last third down play, that's exactly what they talked about. Let's make a play. Let's get off the field. Let's reverse the momentum. Instead, they got hit with another first down, almost back to the drawing board. A couple of first downs have him to the 40 now on first and 10. Now Mayfield. Eluding the pressure right. And he's going to keep it here. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. It went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. They tried to throw on second down. Unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Mayfield down. He's going to dump this off to his running back, Hunt. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to convert on third and short yardage with a gain of four. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. Mayfield. That's complete to Peoples-Jones. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. On first down, they'll run with Hunt. And not much running room. Down to the 32. A gain of three, second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run. 
but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. And the last run got three, now here's second and seven. Here's Mayfield, and it's hauled in by Austin Hooper. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 19. Mayfield finding Hooper there for a Cleveland first. As a passer, you're always trying to find that open window to throw the ball downfield. How about this one? Right in the middle of the field, right in the heart of the defense. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Baker Mayfield with a touchdown pass to Austin Hooper. And the Browns add on to their lead. Well, we know someone just added to his touchdown passing total, but all he did was get the ball out quickly to his tight end and let him take care of business the rest of the way. Now Parkey for the extra point. It's good, and before you know it, it's 21-0. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. Now after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. Taken in at the three. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Nothing here. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And some dangerous territory. You're already down three scores. A three and out here or an inability to put any points up. This one might be over by half. Yeah, and what you also have to guard against is calling every play for a big shot downfield. You know, thinking you're going to get all these points back on one drive. You're not. And last time I looked, it's still the first half. I'm not saying you have ultimate patience here, but you also don't have to go ahead and force everything either. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at the 31-yard line. From the gun, he'll set up to throw. Completion here to Claypool. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. Over the middle, complete. It's Johnson. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. Twenty-one, nothing. Our score after one. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now Ben going to give this one to Connor. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. 
They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down. It will. Would you say this offense is locked in right now? They're having no trouble on this drive. What is it, three plays, three first downs? Yeah, you talk about on the march. They keep this up, they'll get to that end zone real fast. Right back to Connor here on first. And he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going. And really, the offensive line not helping him much. On second and seven, Roethlisberger. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And the Steelers are going to be set up with a first and goal here as the tackle made at the nine. His first catch there, good for 10 yards and a first down. Check that! Black 20! Come on, baby. I see what you got. Check that! Come on, come on, come on. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Got his man, it's caught for a Steelers touchdown. Deontay Johnson on the other end of the throw from Ben Roethlisberger. And the Steelers are able to cut into that deficit. That seemed like a much-needed touchdown after 21 unanswered points to start the game. It's not often that you equate a football game to a golf tournament, but it's like you don't want to shoot yourself out of the tournament too early. So they needed that touchdown to make sure that they got an opportunity to not just get back into this game, but a chance to win it later if they continue to play well. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. It's up, it's good, and that'll cut the lead to 21-7. to seven. A drive that time of six plays, and it ends with the Steelers finding the end zone. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Peoples-Jones returning. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. There's Baker Mayfield as he and the Browns offense comes back out. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of him. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes, but right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 27. Off the play fake, he'll set up to throw it. And he gets it to his running back, Nick Chubb. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. They'll contain him to just four, second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. They'll run with Hunt on second down. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. To throw Mayfield. Looking left side, that's caught by Landry. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. 13 yards to pick up there, good for a Cleveland first. 
Well, remember, they tried to give him the ball and let him run on the last play, but I think the light bulb went off in their play caller's mind, and this time, they get it to him the more conventional way, and it's much more successful as well. Mayfield now from the 50. And he completes it to Hunt. Fighting through it, he's got space. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. First and 10, Mayfield. Open man is Higgins. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time and another first down. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. And yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. The passing game's been working quite well so far, but the running game's been a little bit of a struggle, and that's a surprise to me. Typically, when you can throw it, you've opened up lanes for your runners. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. A run for Nick Chubb. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. He'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half. And I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. The Browns on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third and nine. Mayfield looks to throw. And he's going to go down. He's sacked back at the 24. Stephon Tuitt able to shake free and get home for the sack. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop and they can often hit big. But sometimes they take too long to develop and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? typically a blitz and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen now that allows your blitzers to get there now cody parkey out to try the field goal from the right hash it's a 41 yard attempt the kick by parkey is good and they will open things up a bit more. It's 24 to 7. So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays, and the net result, three points. Take your disappointment and put it aside. Nine plays, yeah, they want to end up in the end zone with a touchdown. I get that. But sometimes those nine play drives pay dividends later with another nine play drive that culminates in a touchdown when they wear down a defense. Parkey now following the made field goal to kick this one off. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. Juju Smith-Schuster and the rest of this offense heading back out there. You better believe that he's well aware he has zero catches right now, and they're losing, so he's probably a little hungry. And you know the guys on defense are aware as well, and they're really excited that he has no catches, but they're also worried because a lot of times, that's like the ticking time bomb. The longer you hold him down, when he finally explodes, look out. Yeah, no catches, though, so far in this game. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 26. He'll set up to throw. Throw left side, taken in by Claypool. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 
It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out, and by a few inches, that'll be a first down. When you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. Here's a first down throw that's complete. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Go, Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. And hitting Juju on the slam. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 48-yard line. Throwing again, it's Roethlisberger. He gets it left side to Johnson. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn to an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Here's a running play for Juju. And that one covered beautifully. Their defenders stayed home, and they'll stop him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time, because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. And the Steelers on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and four. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now it's Roethlisberger. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Larry Ogunjobi never giving up. He works his way to the QB for a loss of 12. Three scores down, not even a halftime yet. They are not getting much generated offensively. They've got to figure it out. It's tough because this, this defense just seems to be playing with so much confidence right now. They really are. They are on their toes, and they're getting at them. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. Shotgun handoff to Samuels, and he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That was a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short gain. And the Steelers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and a mile. Roethlisberger will throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. And it's a 15-yard pickup, but it'll lead to a fourth down. I think that we all figured when he caught it that short of the marker, 
that the defense almost relaxed and said, we've got this covered. And then all of a sudden, space to run after the catch. And now they're screaming, somebody get him down. Fortunately, they got to him and forced the fourth down. So on fourth down, the Steelers call on the number of Chris Boswell for the field goal try. And this one, a 41-yard attempt. And Boswell's kick is good. And that will close the gap down to 14. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets them three, not six. Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there. Ten-play drive. But they stiffened when they got close to the goal line, made them kick a field goal. And for the offense, ten-play drive. They might be a little disappointed they got a field goal, but they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Now Nick Chubb of the Browns gets set for their next possession. A good job in the passing game. Decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally you run to set up the pass. Here it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now. First and 10, just shy of the 30. He'll start things off with a handoff to Chubb. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Throwing on second and eight, Mayfield. Looking left side, he's got it complete. Now third down is looming, a pickup of two on first down and just one yard there. But there wasn't much there with that hitch route. They didn't gain what they expected. But sometimes when you call a hitch, you really don't have an alternate to go to. You don't have a second route to throw it to. So sometimes you have to rifle in there and hope for the best. On third down, Mayfield. This one complete into the hands of Higgins. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That'll put him at an even 50 receiving yards now in this first half. And it's a first down. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. down Mayfield and that's going to be caught by Peoples Jones and he is tackled inside the 40 not quite to the 35 12 more yards there and another first down and with that completion he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half boy a tough start for the secondary defensively it is and it's got to put a dent in their confidence and you know you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays but with the kind of numbers he's putting up here it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. And he'll snag about five yards down to the 32. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gain five yards on it, and be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Second and five now. Mayfield. Now Mayfield lost the football.
two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Time rolls around. Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. Buying time to his left. And this play comes to a halt at the 33, and obviously that's well short of the first down. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. From the left hash, it's an even 50-yard attempt. And Parkey's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 17. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right. right? Baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. Parkey now following the made field goal to kick this one off. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Getting set to go again, Ben Roethlisberger marches onto the field. And how does he rally the troops, so to speak? He's played well, but they're down big on the scoreboard. How does he get his guys going? To make sure they understand it's not a me game, it's a team game. Everyone has to come together. Everyone has to up the level of play a little bit, including himself, and find a way to make some plays in order to give them a little bit of a spark and rally the team. We'll see if they can indeed rally down big on the scoreboard right now. Now this pass to Vance McDonald complete. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. To throw again on second down. Roethlisberger, Johnson with a completion over the middle. That one, a first down pickup of eight. It's been a very one-sided game so far. They got to change what they're doing right now, don't they? You can't wait till the halftime speech to make an adjustment. No, you can't, because if you're doing it right, you're adjusting from series to series, and they need a big adjustment here to try to put some points on the board. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. First and 10 here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, there's something about narrowing it to a two-score game at half that makes it feel like much less of an obstacle. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. The D-tackle Sheldon Richardson came barreling in for the sack. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. That went into the hands of his tailback, Samuels. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Now how about this throw right here? Had to throw it to the left sideline, and you know the timing's got to be correct on this one. Ball's got to be right where it needs to be, and it was. That's because he had great arm strength on that one, able to drive the football. Quarterbacks love it when they can show off their arms. Now Roethlisberger on first down. And his throw here is incomplete. 
And the intended receiver out of the backfield was Jalen Samuels. That'll bring up second down. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Here's Roethlisberger to throw. He'll find Smith-Schuster. That's complete. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 32-yard line. A solid gain of 15 yards, and the sticks move. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. He was true on his first, this a tough one, from 49 yards away. Boswell's kick is good. And that will close the gap down to 14. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the one-two to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal, not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. So six seconds, all that remains of this first half is the kick is away. Peoples-Jones returning. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So time perhaps for one final kneel down before they take this lead to the locker room. The final second ticks by, and that's going to do it for the first half of play. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw a strong first half out of the former Heisman Trophy winner, Baker Mayfield. He's thrown for over 200 yards already, and his guys have the lead as well. As we get you back to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. are going to get the second half kickoff and they've got this lead as well as we are back and underway that'll be taken about a yard deep and they'll get him down right around the 25 actually the 26 officially so a net gain of one there as the offense comes out we put our madden spotlight on baker mayfield and maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit he's playing pretty well but the pressure it's got to him has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with their quarterback on the ground so much. Now he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. The Browns drive about to get started. They had a big first half. Now they have a chance to add to that lead here in the opening possession of the second half. And everyone always asks about halftime adjustments, kind of the key phrase. What did you do at halftime? Well, the way they ran offense in the first half, I think they were very calm, congratulatory, but also what they were saying is, 
don't expect them to be the same on defense. They'll be the ones making the adjustments. Let's see what they do, and we'll attack accordingly. And we'll see how they attack here. Throwing on second and three. Mayfield to the right side, and he's got Landry complete. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. He continues to deliver a first down here. He had four catches in the first half, and this one number five. the gun they run it with Hunt and he'll be brought down just shy of the 45 it's big Vince Williams who made the tackle I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry he wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole ended up only getting four yards on the carry I think he had designs on that one being bigger they go play action Mayfield this pass complete to Higgins. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 36. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Oh, that was a pretty route right there because it's all about finding a window on a route like that. He lined up on his left, ran the deep in route over the middle, and the ball was right where it needed to be. Really good trust between quarterback and receiver. Really good completion. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 36. They run. Chubb. And he'll be taken down at the 33. A pickup of about four. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. To throw on second and six, Mayfield. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Landry, the intended target, and it's third down. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. And the throw there going to be incomplete. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs. Able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. So now the field goal unit trots out there for the third time tonight. From the left hash, it's an even 50-yard attempt. And he missed it. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Steelers offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. And Charles, they trail by a couple of scores, but if they could put a good drive together here, it'd go a long way toward getting them back in this football game. And if you're looking at a checklist of things that they need to do in the second half, job number one was getting a stop, wasn't it? So, big check right there. Now they want to see if their offense can build on that momentum. All right, try the 50-yarder and miss it, and now this offense has it first and 10 at the 40. They'll start the drive with Samuels. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, 
you can often miss time that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. He's got a man open. It's Chase Claypool. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That one good for 14 yards and a Steeler first. Play fake to Connor. Now Roethlisberger. Ebron caught left side. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. A good pick up there, a 22. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. First and ten, it's Roethlisberger. And he's got his man, the tight end, McDonald. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Again, it's Roethlisberger. Fighting his safety valve here. That's complete. And the Steelers are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. The passing game in rhythm right now for Pittsburgh. There's another first down. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Ben to throw again. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line. Second and goal. Roethlisberger will hand to Connor. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. On third and goal, Roethlisberger. And caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Ben Roethlisberger with a touchdown pass to Juju Smith-Schuster. And the Steelers have now made this a one-score game. That's a score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard and you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Boswell for the extra point. And that'll cut the lead down now to a touchdown. That time a nine-play drive. And it ends with a Pittsburgh touchdown.
Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Peoples-Jones returning. And able to get this out to the 25. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. Pretty important third quarter drive for them. Momentum has sort of shifted the other direction after that last touchdown as they nurse this small lead. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game. First and 10 here. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Second and six, just inside the 30. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. Open man is Higgins. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. Takes to midfield, but no further. Just a yard there. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Mayfield now from the 50. And finding the tight end, Hooper. It's an eight-yard pickup, and that'll bring up what looks to be a third and in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Could be four-down territory even if they don't get this, but they need just a few inches here on third. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Brandon, they're still in the lead, but momentum's certainly been going the opposite direction. So to me, that's a really important pickup there on third down. Try and regain some confidence, and you're right. They need to stem the tide a little bit. That certainly helped. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. Kaderil Hodge has it complete. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Here's Mayfield. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. Alex Highsmith. Give him the credit for the sack and a loss of 14 yards. Brandon, more often than not, you'd say they've had his number, and we can count them up so far. One, two, three, four sacks given up. But guess what? He's still been able to make some plays, and right now they have a lead. Mayfield in this Browns offense, staring at a third and long now after the sack. 
Now Mayfield. And that is incomplete. A strong safety, Sean Davis, there to break up that pass play. They went with the dime look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. Here's Jamie Gillen now, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And this one's out of bounds. Should be inside the 10, I think it is, at the six-yard line. So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to like a good golfer can check one up. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Johnson. And they'll get him down up past the 15, just shy of the 20. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Give him nine there on the first down completion. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. There's a ball thrown right side and complete. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. 23 yards to pick up there. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Field now. Here's Roethlisberger firing quickly here, and that's complete. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. They go play action with Roethlisberger. He'll get this to Connor underneath. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 34-yard line. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. Well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. They run the option here on first and ten. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. Well, they had a gain of 10 last time, now a gain of 20 here. Got exactly what they wanted there out of the RPO and had the defense out of position. One word for you there, excellent. Because he read all the keys properly, made the right decision, and look at the result. Pretty substantial gain. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And that's incomplete. That one was tipped up in the air and fortunately fell away for the defense because if the offense is able to grab that one, that's a short little jaunt into the end zone because there's not enough reaction time off of a tip ball for the defense to rally and make a tackle. They were very fortunate on that play. 
On second down, Samuels. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. But this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and 10. Nice run on second and 10 when probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. Roethlisberger now to throw on third down. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. So now the field goal unit trots out there for the third time tonight. This from 25 yards out. And Boswell's kick is good. And that'll bring him back within four. He's got nine points on field goals now. He's made three of them. That gets him a bit closer, but there's no question they need to start turning some of these threes into sixes. And for him, it's not his concern, right? He just goes out there when they call on him and goes ahead and puts points up on the board. But the offense has got to get together and figure out what's stalling their drives so they have to keep calling on him. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. Peoples-Jones returning. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Baker Mayfield leads the offense out for their next possession. He's been pretty solid, pretty consistent. Just the one touchdown pass, but I think he's managed the game well, no? I would agree with you, and that's what you're looking for out of your field leader. Making sure that you're playing well and not making any big mistakes. Oftentimes, that's how you're judged. Mm -hmm. How big a mistake and when it occurs. No interception so far. They'll like that. I just want you to know that you agreeing with me, that's going to get me through this third and fourth quarter. Are you touched? He's patting his heart, boys and girls. He's touched. Respect. The throw right side is complete here on the first play of the drive. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. Well, that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. On first down, it's Hunt, and three yards there takes him to the 45. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Back to the ground. This time it's Chubb. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. Mayfield from the gun on third down. This one complete into the hands of Higgins. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. With that catch, he goes over 100 yards receiving on the night. not have time to get another play in here as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports.
So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Running with Hunt here out of the shotgun. And he gets it down to the 32. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. The Browns on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. Here it's third and two. Chubb. And down he goes, but the stiff arm utilized effectively there, and it helps him move the sticks. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. Mayfield leaves it for Hunt on the draw. And he'll get it down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. They run it again with Chubb. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Defensively, they rally the troops to force fourth down after that seven-yard pickup back on first. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. The kick by Parkey is good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. Now from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. Parkey now following the made field goal to kick this one off. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. 
it's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 23. He'll throw from the gun. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. He was trying to get that one out to his running back out of the backfield, but that one was read and timed perfectly, and they were able to break it up. Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. Play action. It's Roethlisberger. Open man completes it to Smith-Schuster. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Chase Claypool, the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. Second and 10, it's Roethlisberger once more. That went into the hands of his tailback, Samuels. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. And that's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. On third down, Roethlisberger throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he gets this only to the 41, not near enough for the first. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. And he puts a little something extra into this one, by far his best of the night. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is... Do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but it's still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now. First and 10 at the 20. They begin this drive with Chubb, and he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And he will lose yardage on the play, back at his own 19-yard line. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here, and what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. On 
third down, Mayfield. And this is caught. He hits Landry. And he'll be out right at the 35. Just what the Browns needed there. Good for a gain of 17. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. On the carry, it's Chubb. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. His carries tonight, they're getting up there. So maybe one of those every now and then is understandable. I would agree with that. Understandable every now and then. Sometimes you come back and you fake it to him and go play action. But other times you say, okay, they got him on that one. We'll come back to him in another carry. Mayfield able to find Hunt out of the backfield. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going to go down. T.J. Watt bringing the pressure yet again. That's his third sack here tonight. Tell you what, he did not have much time there to scan the field before he was ducking and covering. Did it appear to you, as it did to me, that the defensive front won their play really quickly, yeah. meaning the guys in front of them had almost no chance to block them? They were on him in a hurry. Here's Jamie Gillen now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. A good kick, 49 yards, just three on the return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 21. From the gun, he'll set up the throw. He gets it left side to Johnson. Three yards the game there, second down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. No gain on that one, and it's going to bring up a third down. That's a nice job defensively to make sure everyone was accounted for because ordinarily you pick up the guys downfield and sometimes you forget about the running back. In this case, they did not and dropped him for no gain. The Steelers on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third and seven. Able to hit his target, Claypool. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. He got out of bounds. That's a good thing, but still short of the first. And now, since this brings up fourth down, the defensive play caller, grab your nerves because now you don't want to be so amped up that you give them a first down by getting out of your lanes, but you also don't want to just lay back and let them have it easily. Barry on to punt as he gets this one away. Great coverage there, holds him to a two-yard return following a 50-yard punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. 
Now the Browns offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 24. They'll begin the drive with Hunt. Two yards on the carry there, and it'll be second down. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. to throw Mayfield they'll go screen here to Hunt and he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage but no more than that nothing on the screen that time now it's third down so nothing there on the screen that time that means all that great acting they tried on offense went for naught didn't it because you have to try and influence them make them think that you're doing something else make them think that they can get to the passer by letting them by and then setting up the screen and getting downfield didn't happen at all give a lot of credit to the defense for not tumbling to that one. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. Mayfield looks to throw. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. Stephon to it. His second sack of the night. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game. The way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Here's Jamie Gillen now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And a nice job here on special teams. This will be down inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. Well, someone's going to be happy with that effort. You know who else is going to be happy? His defense. Absolutely. <laughs> He's created a very long field for that offense to try to traverse. And he got some help from Mr. Football there. Checking up nicely. Good English on that punt. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Ten, it's Roethlisberger to the right side to Eric Ebron a short gain here maybe a yard to the 29 not much there only a yard it's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up boy then you've got real trouble trying to get him down but they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down they only got a yard out of that last completion and that makes this second and nine now it's Roethlisberger. Pass incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. And the Steelers on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is third and nine. Ben to throw again. And they get to him with a pressure as Roethlisberger goes down. 
In for the sack, Miles Garrett. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense, six defensive backs. None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep the, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing, the O-line coach will. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And that will come the offense as they take over. And the Browns getting set to go. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tempt to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll try and wind down some clock with Chubb. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. Again, it's Chubb. And he'll get this forward only for about a yard as that's going to take us to the two-minute warning. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. They push forward, but I don't think it's enough. He's going to be about a yard short. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Here's Jamie Gillen now. He's been terrific so far. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. You rarely call your punter a weapon, but he certainly was there. How about that? Pinning him down at the one-yard line and helping out the defense in a big way. I'm telling you what, if I'm a defensive coordinator, I might be thinking safety right now. So Ben Roethlisberger in the offense. Down by seven, a little under a minute 50 remaining. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. They begin on the ground here with Connor. And he's going to be taken down shy of the five-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Partner, they're clearly saving those timeouts, but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position. Here go, here Clock go. running here under 90 seconds to go. Back to throw. Fighting to stay upright. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. This defense has watched their lead dwindle away. This is where they really need to bow up. They executed well there. And it's often hard after you've played really well early and then you kind of relax a little bit to step on the gas again. They just did it on the last play. Looks like they want to finish this one off. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone, they need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. Come on, come on. 
Back to throw. Open man, Smith-Schuster, it's complete. They were looking for a cushion from that end zone. He gave it to them, 15 big yards. Obviously a big first down right there. Yeah, they still got a hustle. They got to get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. But I don't think necessarily you need to spike it. But they've got to continue to move quickly. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Here's Roethlisberger. He'll find Smith-Schuster. That's complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Another first down as he went right back to the same well, this time for 17 yards. Counting down to 30 seconds remaining. Now it's Roethlisberger. He'll get this to Connor underneath. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in the game. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. They'll look to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Johnson. Now the Steelers are going to use their third and final timeout as they get it with just 19 seconds left on the clock. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Throwing now is Roethlisberger. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. He's back to throw. Ebron with it over the middle. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 18. He'll wind up getting 11 on that one. And it's going to yield a new set of downs. He's padding his already great numbers here in overtime. More importantly, though, moving his guys downfield. And I think that's exactly what's going through his head right now. Moving them downfield, putting them in a position to win the game. The stats, that's for the fantasy guys. <laughs> I know they're enjoying that show. Well, Charles, they were close in the end, but they couldn't get that last play, that last little miracle play done. They were within striking distance, but couldn't find a way to score. They definitely had hope. They definitely had opportunity. Just unable to cash in at the end. Not an easy play by any stretch, but they definitely had a chance. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. With that, we say good night from Pittsburgh.